Welcome back to another Roblox Studio tutorial. In today's video, I'm going to show you how you can set up different spawn locations in your game so that when players join, they each spawn to their own location. Alright, so let me go ahead and load a local server with four players and I can show you what this looks like. And now that I'm in the game, you can see that each player has spawned to a separate spawn location. Alright, so let's go ahead and dive in and see how we can do this in Roblox Studio. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to go over to the workspace over in the explorer menu and we're going to be adding a folder. So to do that you can just click on the plus sign and click on folder here. Go ahead and rename your folder to spawns and inside our spawns folder is where we're going to be storing all of our spawn locations. So what you need to do for each one is start by renaming it. So the new name should be spawn1, spawn2, all the way through the number of spawns that you have. And then for each spawn location you want to add a boolean value to it. So to do that you can just click on the plus sign search for bool value and then click on it. Once you insert your bool value you want to rename it so you can just right click and press rename and you want to rename it to free. After that go ahead and click on your bool value and next to value make sure the checkbox is checked. Alright so that's all we have to do for the setup so basically under the workspace we just added a folder we renamed that folder to spawns and we stored all of our different spawn locations inside this folder and then for each spawn location we added a boolean value which we renamed to free. Alright so now that we have that out of the way let's go ahead and take a look at the script. So for the scripting part of it we're going to go under the server script service and click on the plus sign and add a script. So basically the way this is going to work we're going to set up two different functions one for when the player joins the game to assign them to a spawn location and then once the player leaves the game we want to free up that location so that when the next player joins they can take it. So let's go ahead and start with the first one we're going to say local function. We can call this function on player join. Inside the parentheses we're going to put the parameter player and this parameter right here comes from the player added event so whenever a player joins the game it automatically sends this information to the function. Inside the function we're going to start with a for loop so we're going to say for underscore comma and then we're going to do a shorthand for spawn we're going to put s p w n we're going to say in pairs Inside the parentheses, we're going to say game dot workspace dot spawns. So right now we're referencing the folder right here. And then from this folder, we want to get all the items inside of it. And we can do that by saying colon and get children. Inside this for loop, we're going to start by saying if spawn dot free. So dot free is that value that we added to it, this Boolean value. So we're going to say dot free dot value then. So for a boolean value you can either be true or false. So what we're doing here is we're checking to see if that free value is equal to true. If it's equal to false then it's going to say if false and it won't run this code. So if the spawn location is free then what we're going to do is we're going to say player which is this player right here the player that joined the game dot respawn location and we're going to set this equal to spawn. Next we're going to say spawn dot free dot value is equal to false. So this means that the spawn location is taken. Then we're going to say local spawn tag is going to be equal to instance dot new and this is going to be a new string value. And then we're going to say spawn tag dot name is equal to spawn tag and then we'll say spawn tag dot value and this is going to be equal to spawn dot name and then we'll say spawn tag dot parent is equal to player and then finally if it finds an open location we want to stop looking and we're going to stop looking by saying break So just a quick recap on this function. What we're doing first is we're taking a look at the spawns folder and getting all the objects inside of it. So the objects inside of it will be the four spawn locations in my case. Then we're checking the free value under each spawn and seeing if it's true or false. If it's true, then what we're going to do is set that player's spawn location equal to the particular spawn. And next we're going to set the spawn's free value equal to false so that it can't be taken by another player. And this next part here attaches a string value to each player that joins the game. 
and the string value is going to record the spawn location's name. So this is going to be more important when the player leaves the game because we want to know which spawn location to free up. All right, so now that that's done, let's go ahead and work on our second function. And this one's going to run whenever the player leaves the game. So we're going to start out the same by saying local function. This time we'll change the name to on player exit. Inside the parentheses, we're still going to put player. Inside of this function, we're going to say local spawn tag is going to be equal to player dot spawn tag dot value. So from before, we attached that spawn tag to each player that joins the game. So what we're doing here is whenever the player leaves the game, we're starting out by getting that spawn tag information. Then we're going to use that spawn tag to locate the corresponding spawn location in the folder. And we're going to do that by saying local spawn is equal to game dot workspace dot spawns. So that's the folder. And inside the folder, we're going to be looking for a name that matches our spawn tag. And finally, once we find that spawn location, we're going to say spawn dot free dot value is equal to true. Okay, for this function, what we're doing is whenever the player leaves the game, we're going to be taking a look at their spawn tag. And then we're going to be using that to figure out which spawn they were assigned to when they joined the game. And then once we find that spawn location, we're going to set its free value back to true so that the next player can claim that spawn location. And finally, down here at the bottom, we just need to connect our functions to the player added event and the player removing event. So for the first one, we're going to say game dot players dot player added colon connect. And this one we're going to connect to on player join. And then we're going to say game dot players dot player removing colon connect. And this time we're going to connect it to the on player exit function. All right, so what I'm going to do this time is just run the game as a single player so that I can show you how different parts of the script work. Okay, so the first thing I want to show you under the workspace in our spawns folder, let's go ahead and take a look at spawn one, which is what this player spawned to. And if we take a look at the spawns free value, we can see that it's set to false. And that happens from the script right here. So once it found an open location, then it sent the player there and set the free value equal to false. If we take a look at the other spawn locations and their free value, we can see that they're still set to true. And the other thing I want to show you is under players. Let's go and take a look at my player. And we can see right here we have a spawn tag. So when the player leaves the game, it uses this name right here to look in the folder to see which one it matches to. And then once it finds the match, which it'll match to this one here, it's going to set this value right here back to true. So that's what happens right here. It attaches that string value to the player, which stores the spawn location. And then when the player leaves the game, it's going to take that name and look in the folder. And then it's going to look at the free value and set it back to true. All right, so hopefully you understand how this works and you can set it up for your own game. This is going to be the end of the tutorial. I hope you enjoyed and stay tuned for the next one.